Hi guys, Christian here. In today's video, I'm gonna be coming to you about subnets. What's happening right now on Avalanche that's gonna bring all of the gaming projects onto the AVAX network. This is something that's incredibly huge and I don't think many people are talking about it, but Krabata, the main game right now on Avalanche that controls 16% of the blockchain transactions, just announced that they are gonna be opening up their own testnet subnet on March 4th. So in a couple of days, people can start migrating their Krabata tokens and their crabs from the Avalanche C chain onto the Krabata subnet. This is a huge deal for Krabata and for a lot of other gaming tokens such as DeFi Kingdoms and others that are soon going to be making that transition onto the Avalanche chain. So let's dive right into today's episode on how the gaming tokens on Avalanche are going to go exponential here in the next couple months. Let's start off with a quick overview on what a subnet is. Basically, a subnet is your own blockchain. Avalanche is one of those unique chains, similar to Polkadot. You've got your primary network, then your exchange chain, the X chain, your platform chain, the P chain, and the contract chain, the C chain. Most of the transactions right now are happening on the C chain. That's Avalanche's main blockchain right now. But their main goal is to be able to digitize everything. Anything that has value, the Avalanche co-founders would like to see on the blockchain. Avalanche's main goal in life is to take all value that they can from the real world and be able to transplant it onto the blockchain. That is what Avalanche intends to do. And they've been doing an amazing job. I mean, take a look at what they're priced at right now. As you know, Avalanche is one of those layer one blockchains that just exploded over the last year. In 2020, they were in the $6 range. In 2021, they were as low as $12. And now they're at about $100. They've been over 100, close to 140 is their all time high. Right now sitting at right around $90, but there's oh so much more that they can do and they intend on doing it here right now especially with subnets so the first big announcement as far as subnets go is with Krabata. it is a blockchain game if you don't know what it is it's got about 7,000 players right now but it intends to be the next Axie Infinity. Right now, there's only limited functionality in terms of the gameplay itself. You can basically send your crabs down to mine, another group can go down to loot it, they go back and forth for a couple of times, and you might come away with some of the treasure under the sea tokens, plus some Krabata tokens as well. But they do plan on getting to that battle zone game pretty soon here. Isn't everyone trying to tackle Axie Infinity, the big boy on the block right now? But Krabata's got a very good roadmap ahead of it. You can see quarter four, 2021, they accomplished just about everything they set out to do. Right now in quarter one, 2022, we're looking at cross-platform player versus environment campaigns, some quests, player levels going up, Krabata levels going up, then the L2 private chain. That's the subnet right now that's going to be launching in the next couple of days and they're gonna be fully rolled out here by the beginning of April. In quarter two of 2022, there's gonna be land ownership, there's gonna be player versus environment, player versus player. Those are the battles that are gonna happen, similar to what Axie Infinity does right now. So quarter three, 2022, there's gonna be a marketplace, more game items, different things going on, tournaments towards the end of the year. This wants to be the biggest game on Avalanche. And right now, you can see based on the DAP radar statistics, Krabata's gaining a lot of traction and a lot of market share. In fact, as I mentioned at the beginning, they're about one-fifth of all the transactions right now on Avalanche. Once they start to launch their own subnet, it's gonna be amazing to see how fast this game gets adopted and also too, how much treasure under the sea tokens get burnt because that's gonna be the gas fees that are gonna go into their subnet. The Corbata subnet's gonna be called the Swimmer Network. Ah, it's not a liquid. It's a great many pieces of solid matter that form a hard floor-like surface. Ah! They're gonna be using that treasure under the C token, the TUS, to be the gas fee on the Swimmer network. And they're gonna invite other people to come onto the network and use it as well. So not only will Krabata be using this network, other games can use it as well. There's gonna be extremely low gas fees and that treasure of the C token right now is only about 10 cents. It'll probably be a fraction of that to create a transaction on the Swimmer network. Krabata is setting aside over 1.25 million in CRA tokens to be used as ecosystem grants for community development, community contributors, and new games. So not not only will this blockchain house Krabata, but it will house a lot of other games as well. 
The great Krabata migration is going to happen here. The only bad thing about these subnets is that you do have to bridge from the Avalanche sea chain where they are right now onto that subnet, which will be that swimmer network. You'll be moving your tokens from the Avalanche sea chain to the swimmer network. That bridge, of course, will probably take you a little bit of time. And it's always that nerve wracking to make sure that all of your assets get from one side of your wallet to the other. One of the really cool things I found out while researching this project is that there's another company called Cross Chain Capital. They're a DAO decentralized investment fund. What they've been doing is taking collaborations of funds and being able to allow people to buy into the Krabata game and others as well by offering pools that allow you to mint an NFT and that NFT is representative of a certain amount of pool that you own. In this case, they're Krabata pools. So they're taking these Krabata crabs and they're using them in the mining game right now they'll be using them in the battle game later and as they earn these tus tokens they distribute them every single day directly into your wallet so if you're not a big game player or you don't have time to do this similar to what i do i love to be able to invest in these projects and be able to earn passive income while still taking advantage of this brand new technology and a lot of upside so cross chain capitals pools are put into the hunt DeFi finance program you can go on to their website and you can take a look at the pools right here. They mint new pools from time to time and that's when they're buying and breeding crabs. You can place as little as $100 or you can place all the way up to the entire pool size. In this case, it was $55,000. So what does that $55,000 get you? You basically own five crab teams and they mine these guys about six times every day. So they're earning about one to one and a half percent of your money on a daily basis. So if they're getting that full one and a half percent on a daily basis, that's about 45% a month. 90% every two months. So you're getting about 500% APR from these NFTs that you're purchasing and minting through the Hunt D5 protocol. And the best part is you're gonna get your money back in about two and a half months. So even if the project is a complete failure, hopefully we last at least this two and a half months to get your money back, get your money out, and then you're playing with the house money going forward. So when Krabata announced they were going on to the subnet, their token price jumped from 88 cents all the way up to $1.25. It's hovered down now to $1.15, but you can see the desirability there is out there right now for this type of game. This is the first subnet that is of any major significance gonna launch on the Avalanche network, and people are watching this really closely because the next one up is the big boy on the block. And that, like you know, is DeFi Kingdoms. DeFi Kingdoms is gonna be launching their subnet on Avalanche here, probably towards the end of the month or the beginning of April, but they're getting everything in order right now in order to launch Crystal Veil. And that's a subnet where they're either gonna be using Jewel or Crystal as their gas token. Most people are, are insinuating that Jewel's probably gonna be used. I think that's gonna happen as well. If Jewel's gonna be used as gas and also being burned on the Avalanche network, you can only expect one thing for the token price to do. So much! Papa, Papa, Papa. Papa. We played video games and got high! We did wrong! Whoa, we whoa, did whoa, wrong! Whoa, 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 little boopas! Come on now! You kids, you did real good here! You did good! Getting high and playing video games is the best! I swear to f***ing God! With so many incredible games making their way onto the Avalanche network, subnets are only going to boost that performance and that desirability of other developers to develop on Avalanche. This is your opportunity to take advantage of what's going on right now with subnets and what's gonna happen with the entire Avalanche ecosystem here. And I really want you to do so. But before you leave me, make sure you've smashed that like button if you enjoyed this. Also to hit that subscribe and bell notification and I will see you on the next video.